In this video, we're going to be looking at parsing Markdown with PHP using ParseDown, which is a really, really great class to parse Markdown. So if you're not sure what Markdown is, don't worry, I'll be going over this and we'll be writing this out. Um, this is basically stored in a file called article.txt. This could be coming from a database, it could be coming from a file, it could be coming from anywhere really. Uh, but you can see here I've got things like hashes here, I've got asterisks uh, on a line by line basis for this, uh, I've got double underscores here. Basically what par uh, Markdown is, is it, it's a text rep representation of certain things. So for example, these three backticks denote that this should be wrapped in code or pre-tags, and this here is an inline piece of code. These are, un this is an, uh, a list basically. Um, this here is bold. Uh, you can also use asterisks for this, and this is a header. You can also do something like that. And you might be wondering why is this useful? Well, if you've not come across Markdown already and you've not used it anywhere, as soon as you do start to use it, you'll see the benefit. However, this video is not specifically about what Markdown is or you know how to actually write Markdown. It's more about converting it um, or parsing it. So this is the result of what you've just seen in my text editor. You can see that we've got our inline code here. If I just zoom in a bit, you'll see the font difference. Uh, we've got our, our list here and we've got our bold here. So if we just hit hit the uh, page source of this, you can see how this has been converted. Uh, and the other great thing as well is if you notice this line here, that's actually been converted into a paragraph element, which is really cool, uh, when we've not even done anything here. So parse down is a really good solution to actually do this within PHP. It's my favorite solution. And we'll be looking at installing it. We'll be looking at using it. And uh, we'll also be looking at something slightly different, which is how you might use this within comment systems on your website. So the first thing to do really is actually go ahead and install ParseDown. Now I've uh, basically just taken the ParseDown.php file and put it inside of a libs directory within my main directory. That's perfectly acceptable. However, the preferred solution would probably be to install it with Composer. If you head over to GitHub, you can actually find the GitHub repo for ParseDown uh, and it will give you instructions as well. You can hit this link here to go through to Packagist to find the uh, composer package if you are using composer to install that so let's take a look at how we might use it so head over to index.php the first thing we want to do is is require this in if you're using composer you'll probably have an auto load in here uh, that that does that for you but i'm just going to require in libs parse down .php. Perfect. So we can either use the instant static method or we can instantiate it. I'm going to go for the latter. So I'm going to say parse down equals new parse down. That's all we need to do. So now we need to grab this text from article.txt. Again, this could be coming from your database or something like that. Now, as long as you've instantiated this somewhere, you'll then be able to use it for any content. So if you're displaying an article on your website, on your blog or something like that. So if, for example, I were to say text equals file get contents and then choose article.txt and we echo out text, this will give us the contents of the article. So like so. Now, rather than storing your content as pre-formatted text so for example using an h1 here and saying my article you're going to want to use markdown it's a lot easier it's transferable uh, it means you can change the formatting on the fly depending on uh, how it's rendered so um, we're going to say my article with a hash and i'm going to say welcome to my article it is great so that's uh, now going to be in bold and you can find um the, the syntax of Markdown anywhere. It's really, really easy uh, once you learn it as well. So I'm going to say point 0.2, point 0.3. And then I'm going to do some uh, code block here. So I'm going to do some uh, back ticks. So we can just write some code in here. It can literally be anything. And we'll do some inline. So here is some and then we'll just write echo inline code and again we just pop some back ticks around them like that so cool uh, we've now created an article like this at the moment we just get the following not very good we don't really uh, have any use for this 
So let's now go ahead and say, instead of echoing text, we just use parse down and we use the text method. And that's it. We now have parsed markdown. Now, if you want to implement markdown onto some kind of commenting system or something like that, you might want to uh, restrict what you're doing. And I find the best way to do this is either style an element that contains markdown to restrict things like large headers, or you can use the line method. So let's get rid of this and let's just add in this is a comment. Um, it is great. So what we can do is we can obviously use parse down text to parse this like that. Great. So this could be just a user comment on a forum or on an article or something like that. However, what's going to happen here is if a user decides, oh, I want to include this as a header like so, that's just about gone ahead and ruined your website. Basically, it's ruined the styling. You've just automatically rendered a header here. So what you can actually do is you can restrict this to inline elements only. Obviously, things like the EM tags or uh, strong tags are inline elements. So, for example, if we take a look at, if we just remove this header, and we inspect this, that's obviously a strong tag. It's an inline element. It doesn't sit at block level. However, things like headers, unordered list sit at block level. So let's add some content to this. Let's just add maybe a header here. Um, Maybe say one, two, three, and we'll see how that looks. Cool. So this is what we would get in a comment, not what we want. Let's change this now to the line method rather than the text method. And you can see here that everything uh, in terms of block level elements is not rendered. However, we do have the inline elements rendered. So that's a really useful option if you don't want to include the full support for this. So that's parsed down. I think it's a really good solution. Uh, it's obviously quite popular as well. Um, you can head over to the GitHub repo to see things like the wiki. So you've, you've got some usage here as well. You can obviously check out the source code and uh, go ahead and uh, look at how it works.